I have a book here called Restless Creatures. It's by Matt Wilkinson, and it's the story of life in 10 movements. And here it is, I'll just show it again. It's a pretty cool book. Talks a lot about insects, fish, birds, locomotion in general. Obviously it gets to humans. And towards the end, uh, Locomotive Souls is the last chapter. And there's just something that, uh, that jumped out at me. And when I, when I always say I, found, I find PRI everywhere in life, and PRI simply reflects how humans actually exist. It's not a system or a, a tool. It's the best explanation of how humans exist in space and how we stabilize and move ourselves in space and time. Uh, and when those, when it gets thrown off, when our ability to move and stabilize becomes compromised, we, in a way, we de-evolve. We go back to a previous state, into a more unstable state. And when we're unstable, we have to figure out a way to stabilize. And that stabilization is going to come through compensation. But compensation is incorrect muscle function at the incorrect times. It's like we're aging backwards, but not in a good way. I'm aging backwards in a good way because I was so dysfunctional at a young age that I'm getting better with each year. I say I'm like Benjamin Button because I'm feeling better now at 42 than I've ever felt since I was, you know, pre 13, pre teenage years. Okay, so body wise, I, things are better. So I'm aging backwards in a good way. But other people are, you can see it in the way they walk and move, they're de-evolving back to a more primitive stage. And you, what I would compare it to is what he's writing about here, which is how infants or babies uh, begin to learn to walk. And what he says is, the first steps are short and stuttering with quick swings to minimize the single leg support phase. The legs are placed far apart to afford a larger polygon of support. The hips and knees are bent chimp style and the extensor and flexor muscles show a marked tendency to contract in sync, which improves joint stability, but costs energy. That paragraph right there, it's not even a paragraph. Those two sentences or three sentences. The first steps are short and stuttering with quick swings to minimize the single leg support phase. When you see people who are compensatorily walking, what you all see all the time, this left AIC, right BC pattern, is someone who puts their weight on the right foot, left foot's on the ground momentarily, and then they go back to the right. Left, right. Left, right. Their body weight never shifts to the left because their brain does not trust the left side. Uh, some people think it, it's like their left leg is a kickstand. That's the the, the word that's used quite often, and it often is. Uh, it's barely being used. The leg is locked. The knee is locked. The pelvis is locked forward. It's completely compensatory. The, it's, it costs energy because it's unstable. So you constantly have, have, you have to have increased muscle tone, which costs energy. Your body's creating tension to make up for the lack of proper compression of the joint. And that does cost resources. The more you have to compensate, the more brain, the more energy your brain has to put towards stabilizing your body, both conscious and unconscious most likely, because you're gonna be aware of the fact that you can't walk too well. And it takes up your resources. It's like a, it's like a, a virus, a computer program that's hanging, or it just, it, it takes up too much of the computer's resources and it makes the whole system hang. Uh, that's what compensation can do to somebody. And it, and take it from me, it happened to me, uh, it can ruin your life. Uh, that's why this stuff is so important to be able to stabilize your body with the appropriate muscles. Uh, he also says, which I already read, uh, the legs are placed far apart to afford a larger polygon of support. A lot, a lot of times, when people send me pictures, if I'm gonna work with them online, or if I work with them live and I just observe them, uh, a lot of times you'll see, especially PECs, when they're unstable, the feet go wider apart. They stand with a, a stance that's wider apart it's because they can't stabilize properly, so their brain is giving them a wider stance so that they can stabilize a little bit more easily. 
The other thing, uh, the extensor and flexor muscles show a marked tendency to contract in sync, which improves joint stability but costs energy. Again, what you're going to do in order to stabilize your pelvis and your hips, you're going to use extensor muscles. You're going to be using hip flexors, you're going to be using low back muscles, and if it's up in the neck, you're going to be using SCMs, scalenes, upper traps, suboccipitals. These muscles are chronically tight to stabilize not only the neck, but to also stabilize the shoulder blades that are sitting on top of an unstable foundation, which is the rib cage, because the rib cage has come forward and up. And now that convex, concave relationship that the, the scapula should have, that the shoulder blade should have on the rib cage is lost and it's unstable. And your traps, your upper traps, are going to have to really work hard to try to stabilize those scapulas. Uh, and again, that's going to cost, that's going to be metabolically costly. It's not a surprise to me that I would say, personally speaking, I have more energy now than I really have had in a just a really long time. I don't remember having this much energy. And this has been going on now for you know the past six, seven months. I just I don't get tired much anymore. Again, I don't have kids, so that's probably one of the one of the reasons. But, but you know, I don't need as much sleep, which is good because I still wake up a lot. I do fall asleep, but I still wake up a lot. But I don't feel tired the next day, so that's really good. I don't get worn out midday. And I'm not the only one that has said this. I've had clients who, who feel like, you know, that they're, they just have more energy than they've had in such a long time. They feel younger. Um, it's, so it's a pretty cool thing. When you stabilize your body appropriately, when you can walk and breathe without compensation, when you are not using compensatory muscle, extensor muscle, hip flexors, back muscles, and neck to breathe and to stabilize your body and to walk, you have more physical resources to devote to whatever it is you want to do in life. This stuff can consume you emotionally, intellectually, physically, to the point that it is the biggest thing in your life is just get through each day. And that's really no way to live. You're surviving, but you're not really living because you're not being proactive. You're always responding to what your body presents to you. Instead of you having command over your patterns, your patterns are running you. And again, that's a, it's a difficult way to live. I've been there, uh, but it's just, it's just interesting that I kind of saw what we talk about in PRI and what my personal experience was reflected in this book. So it's not only PRI that talks about this stuff, it's just that PRI is kind of the only thing that really knows how to integrate it into what we're trying to do here. So again, this is kind of a cool book. Uh, you'll learn about spines, the origin of spines, uh, birds, locomotion, fish, how uh, the neck muscles, I think, it, is it the neck muscles? Our neck muscles come from gills originally. So that's pretty cool. Uh, just if you're interested, pick it up. It's no, I wouldn't say an easy read, but it's not in incredibly difficult either. But it's pretty cool. And then you can see how human movement and movement described in this book are very similar. You got to be efficient. You got to be efficient. You have to be able to be stable. And without stability, you have to compensate. And compensation comes at a cost.